Hey guys, welcome back to Dude We Can Fix It. Today I'm going to show you how to reinstall a 4L80 e transmission. This is applicable to any 90s or 2000s model Chevy or GMC three quarter ton or heavier truck. Uh, this one specifically is a two wheel drive, but four wheel drive is not much different except for a transfer case and a front drive shaft. So the first thing that is to note here is we just got done rebuilding this transmission so it's completely dry there's no fluid in it get out of there so we also have a remanufactured torque converter which is also dry uh, when you get a new or remanufactured torque converter they're pre-lubed on the inside so that you can put it in the vehicle add some transmission fluid and run it however i'm going to start by adding one to two quarts of transmission fluid so i'm going to use a funnel and some transmission fluid. I'm going to add somewhere between one and two quarts, not a very specific amount. It's good to note that you should probably do this very slowly. All right, so now that we have some fluid in our torque converter, we're going to take a look here. We're going to set the torque converter first on the input shaft splines, and then on these splines here, and then it's also going to lock into the pump. So it should set three times. So we're going to spin and push until this torque converter is all the way seated. That's one. Oh, that sounded like it. We're going to continue to push and twist until we are content that it's all the way seated. There we go, that sounded good. It's set three times and I feel very content that it is all the way seated. All right, so we're gonna put this uh, yardstick across here so we can see how deeply this is seated. Right here you can see that it is past this first bolt hole on the tapered side of the housing. So that's how far ours is seated. All right, now before we begin the installation, we're going to put a little bit of transmission fluid right around this journal. There we go. All right, now we're going to go ahead and jack up the transmission and put it into place. Now as this is coming up, we need to make sure that the dipstick tube lands in this hole as well. And also make sure that your wiring harness and stuff does not get hung up on one side or the other. So there's this tab here which goes into a corresponding hole on the transmission bell housing. So we'll try to line that up and get that to set first and that will line up all of our bolt holes. So we can see that the transmission and the engine are both uh, touching. So now we're going to start by putting the bottom bolt in on each side, so the bolt there. And then we'll come to the other side and put the first bolt in over here. So we'll go ahead and put that bolt in as well. You're going to need a 14 millimeter deep socket, and we're going to go ahead and tighten up the two bottom bell housing bolts. We have an assortment of extensions in order to reach this more easily. We're going to go ahead and put the next bell housing bolt in the hole approximately four inches above the first one. We have the bottom bolts in and we have the second bolt in on the passenger side. We're going to put the second bolt in on the driver's side here. Now that we have the bottom two in, there is a third bolt hole 
right there. We're going to go ahead and put that stud in. And then we will be able to attach the bracket here over the two bolt holes. Sorry, it's not going to be easy to video this part. So you'll have to figure it out. And there's also one bolt hole on the same location on the passenger side. So put those two bolts in next. Now we're going to torque down all six bell housing bolts to 37 foot pounds. All right, come on down here with me. So far we have the bell housing bolts installed. Now we're going to work on the torque converter. So first thing we want to do is we want to look at our gap between the torque converter and the flywheel. We should have an eighth of an inch or so and the torque converter should spin freely. Also, if it's binding up against the flywheel, it may not be seated all the way. So at this point, you would really need to loosen up your bell housing bolts and try to get this seated or take the transmission back down and try to get your torque converter seated. As you can see here, this moves freely and has a gap between the torque converter and the flywheel. Our flywheel has six holes, four of which are round and two of which are oblong. This hole is oblong as well as one over here. So we're going to start with the two oblong holes and we're going to thread in our first two torque converter bolts. But first we're going to apply some Loctite. Now we will apply some Loctite to the threads of our torque converter bolts. And go ahead and install the first torque converter bolt in one of the oblong holes. So line up the stub out on your torque converter with the hole in your flywheel and thread it in by hand and then tighten it up with a 15 millimeter wrench. This will actually suck the torque converter and the flywheel together. Now before this gets too tight, I'm going to go ahead and thread in the torque converter bolt on the other oblong hole, which is adjacent to this one. So oh, once again, apply some Loctite, thread it into the hole. As they tighten up, you'll be able to turn the torque converter so go ahead and apply Loctite to the rest of your bolts. And just continue putting in these bolts until you have them all in. Once again, there are six in total. So now that we have all of the torque converter bolts installed, we're going to torque them to 45 foot-pounds. By the way, if you were having trouble getting your torque converter bolts all installed and your holes were not lining up well, take them out, rotate your torque converter to the next stub out, and thread your bolts in loosely, just finger tight, and then rotate from the crankshaft bolt here and put all your bolts in your torque converter, and then once they're all in place, then start tightening them down. Torque them down to 45 foot-pounds. Rotate and do the next one. It's torqued. And we would do this for all of the torque converter bolts. All right, so we have our brand new transmission mount. Go ahead and just set that in the slot here in place. The heat shield is facing the passenger side and also the transmission mount is more towards the passenger side as well, the slot here. So make sure this is aligned correctly. We'll lift it up and we'll slide the driver's side over this next support first. All right, so now that it is mostly up there, we'll go ahead and straighten it out. Slide it towards the rear. If your mount fell out, let's go ahead and put it back in. On this mount, you see it's got two holes here that go into the transmission, or they are uh, biased towards the rear of the mount. 
so you want the shorter side here facing the rear of the transmission the longer side facing towards the front of the vehicle then put this back in place line up your holes get your two 15 millimeter bolts started by hand Now, you will need a 15 millimeter wrench, preferably a ratcheting type. Go ahead and tighten up both of your transmission mount bolts. All right, now that we have the cross member in place and the transmission mount tightened up, we're ready to install our bolts to hold the cross member. So we have 18 millimeter bolt and an 18 millimeter very tall nut like such. We'll just go into this hole here, set the nut on top with the, the nut portion that you can put the wrench on facing upwards. Start it by hand. Go ahead and do the other one. And start the two on the other side as well. Once you've completed that, get an 18 millimeter wrench. Set it on the nut on top. And then get an 18 millimeter socket and tighten up from below. All right, go ahead and do the same for the other three bolts. All right, now that the support bar is in place and tightened down, we are ready to go ahead and put our washer and nut on the bottom stud of the transmission mount. Start by placing the washer on and then thread on the nut. Use a 15 millimeter socket and extension on a ratchet to tighten this up. And it may even help to have a deep socket, 15 millimeter socket. Now we are ready to install the bolt on yoke and then we'll be ready to put the drive shaft in. So go ahead and align the yoke on the splines, give it a good shove in. It doesn't go all the way you may need to work it a little bit there we go it's all the way seated now get your bolt started in by hand and then you will need a three quarter inch socket to drive it in the rest of the way now we are ready to install the front portion of the drive shaft go ahead and feed it up and set your journals of your U-joint into the bores here and here on the yoke. Make sure they're all the way seated. And then get your clamps and 11 millimeter bolts and go ahead and start threading those in by hand. Get an 11 millimeter wrench and tighten up all four bolts. Now we're ready to set in place the center support and bolt it down. If you do not have a long wheelbase truck, you might not have one of these, so move on to the next step. Go ahead and place your 15 millimeter bolt through the top and put your 15 millimeter nut onto the bottom. Get it finger tight and install the other one. Now go ahead and put your 15 millimeter wrench on top and then tighten up with a 15 millimeter deep socket and ratchet. So at this point, we need to put the transmission into neutral so that we can rotate the drive shaft to install it to the rear axle. So first, 
We'll take this and we'll route this cable in this hook. Next, we will push this skinny section through this opening here. Push it down, pop it through the opening, and now we'll pull it this way until it snaps into place. There we go. Next, we'll put this onto this shift linkage here. There we go. Now my assistant will put the vehicle into neutral. Might want to start by going to park. There we go. So that's park. Reverse. Neutral. All right, let's go ahead and finish connecting our drive shaft. Now that it's in neutral, we can rotate this side to side if need be. Once you get it mostly in place, pull it towards the rear of the vehicle. There we go. Make sure your U-joint is seated on both sides. And go ahead and get your bracket and 11 millimeter bolts and thread them in hand tight. And then tighten them up with an 11 millimeter wrench. And then go ahead and install the bracket and two bolts on the other side. So now we are ready to connect all of our electrical harness to the transmission. Go ahead and pull it down. Open this clamp here and route the large wire loom through it. Close the clamp and it will secure your wires. Next we will install this large case connector. Simply press it in to the connection here until you hear a pleasing snap. Then we will install our rear speed sensor. Simply snap it into place. Like such. Next we will install the forward speed sensor or the input speed sensor. Bring it around, snap it into place. All right, the only connectors left to install are these two going to the neutral safety switch or the park selector switch. Now these connectors are actually glued in. So I'll set them here in place and I'll warm them up with a heat gun. You will want to wear some heat resistant gloves, like some thick leather gloves or welding gloves. That way you don't burn your hands. Get your heat gun, put it on a low heat, and warm the connectors for about 30 seconds. Once the connectors are nice and warm, the glue should be soft, and these connectors should push right in. There we go, that one's in. This one may need to be warmed up some more. There we go. The connector is all the way seated. So now we will lubricate the ends of these two hoses with a little bit of transmission fluid. These are the transmission oil cooler lines. And then we'll simply insert them until you hear an audible click. Once they are installed, you should not be able to pull them back out. So we'll take the small plastic cover and get it over the snap ring. Now we are ready to reinstall the inspection cover. If you did not remove your cross pipe to make it easier, we will install it from the driver's side of the vehicle. Go ahead and place this corner as far towards the driver's side as possible. And then rotate the other side underneath the torque converter. Once you get this tab over the flywheel, go ahead and give it a couple little good smacks. And then you will be able to position it. So once we start getting this into place, you will need to 
pull this tab down over the flywheel. Make sure that the front portion, the U-shaped part of the inspection cover is in front of the flywheel already. Pull down here. Position it over the front of the flywheel and then give it a good smack from the driver's side. That will get it set where it needs to be. Rotate the front top portion of the inspection cover towards the rear of the vehicle. Push it up into place until the bolt holes are aligned. And then go ahead and start your four 15 millimeter bolts hand tight. Now that we have our bolts started, we will need a 15 millimeter socket, extension, and ratchet to go ahead and tighten them the rest of the way up. There are four bolts, two on each side, one here, one here, and then two in the same position on the other side. There we go, the inspection cover is now installed. Now we are ready to install the starter. First thing we're going to do is if you had any shims when you took your starter off, we're going to put them back in place. We're going to stick them up there by applying some grease. I just have some marine grease here. I'm going to apply it liberally to this uh, shim. I have my two shims stuck together some more grease in between. This will allow these shims to stick in place while I install the starter. So line them up with the holes as such and then grab your starter. Now we're going to install the starter. Start by placing the small end in first. have to move the oil cooler lines out the way a little bit. Rotate the large end with the armature up and then slide it into the flywheel area. Careful not to disturb your shims if you have them. Go ahead and get it all the way in and then rotate the back end up. Once you think you have your bolt holes aligned, Go ahead and try to start one. Just get a few turns on it. Keep a hand on the starter at all times until these bolts are well started. Now go ahead and try to start your second. All right, now I have about 10 turns on each bolt. I will not lay underneath it, remove my hands, and get my 15 millimeter socket. Let's go ahead and tighten these up. There we go. The starter is now installed. Now we're ready to attach the signal wire and the main power line going to the starter. First, grab your signal wire and put it on the small stud on your starter. Now that the signal wire is on, get your small lock washer and place it on next. Then get your eight millimeter nut and thread it on by hand. Get your eight millimeter socket and short extension and tighten it up some more. Once it is snug, position your wire in whatever direction you would like it. Then get your ratchet and tighten it down. Make sure your wire is nice and tight. And at this point, you may want to go ahead and route your signal wire. Make sure it does not rub against the heat shield. Next, you will get your main power wire. Go ahead and set it on the large stud. 
It should look like that. Notice this one has a tab on it. That tab goes into a groove in the plastic. Next, get your large lock washer and put it on. And finally, get your large 16 millimeter nut and put it on hand tight. Now get your ratchet and a 16 millimeter socket and tighten it up. Make sure that it is nice and tight and cannot rotate easily. There we go. I like it. Now, move these wires out of the way. Now we're going to place the starter support bracket back on. We'll put it on the stud of the starter first. Then we'll get our small nut and start it on the threads hand tight. There we go. Now we'll get our 13 millimeter bolt and get it started as well. Now get a 13 millimeter socket and short extension and tighten up the bolt. Now you will need an 11 millimeter socket to tighten down the nut on the back of the starter support bracket. Alright, now that that 11 millimeter nut on the torque bracket is nice and tight, just go ahead and reroute all of your wires. This is a diesel, so it has glow plugs down here that I have to make sure are plugged in. You'll also want to make sure that your None of these wires are rubbing against anything sharp like the heat shield or other brackets in the area. So once you have them all where you like them, secure them in place. Alright, so now that the batteries are reconnected, we are ready to start adding transmission fluid to our freshly rebuilt transmission. Alright, so now that we have some transmission fluid in the transmission, we're going to start the vehicle and let it idle. Make sure first that it is in park. So at this point with the vehicle running, mine is off right now because it is too loud to give instruction. You will be able to look here and see this section labeled cold. The fluid should be at least in this area and working its way as it warms up towards this area, which is the hot section. So it shouldn't be here yet because the vehicle is not fully warmed up. You want to fill until it's at the top of the cold section. And now this may be tricky to do because the dipstick tube is the only way to fill the transmission. So when you pour fluid in there and you put the dipstick in, it can have fluid all over the dipstick and give you a false reading. So put it in, bring it out, wipe it off, put it in, bring it out, wipe it off, and repeat several, several times until you start getting a consistent reading without having the rest of the dipstick wet as well. Now once you have gotten to or past the cold mark, stop adding fluid take your vehicle for a short drive, maybe take a five minute drive, come back, let it idle, check your fluid again, and you should be within the hot area. You don't have to be all the way filled up, but at least fill in the first bubble on this one or be within this cross hatched area. If you're still back here after a five minute drive, you need to add some more fluid to get up in this area. 
If you're past this area, then you're going to need to drain some fluid out. That is why we take our time and just add a little bit of fluid at a time because it's easier to add than to take away. All right, so that's how you install your 4L80 transmission back in your vehicle. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and turn on your bell notifications for future videos. As always, dude, we can fix it. We're about to go for a little drive. I'll see you next time.